Well, welcome to the Monday, February 4th uh, weekly weather briefing. Um, again, my name is Steve, uh, forecaster here at the National Weather Service in Spokane. And so the overview for our week is uh, winter. Uh, winter's making a strong comeback this week with some cold air and more snow. Uh, we will be dealing with a light band of snow tonight, um, and that will be uh, followed by continued uh, very cold temperatures, especially relative to what we've been experiencing uh, through much of this winter, um, especially in the valleys. Uh, but we will have some drier air, uh, less snow chances come um, later Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And then as we get uh, late in the week and going into the weekend, uh, snow threat will return again. But uh, yeah, the main message here, temperatures looking uh, 15, 20 degrees below normal for what we expect. So this graphic here shows um, what we're looking for for snow for tonight uh, going into Tuesday morning. So this will have an impact for the Tuesday morning commute. Uh, what is going to happen is we're going to have a band kind of start to come back to the north out of Oregon and move up close to about the I-90 corridor. Um, I guess the uncertainty is how far north does this come, you know, a little further than we have, um, but we're uh, pretty much favoring more of southeast Washington and the lower Idaho panhandle with this system. It will be a fairly light uh, QPF event, but we're not, right now, since we're so cold, uh, we have high snow ratios, so that means it won't take a lot of moisture to get uh, two inches of fluffy snow out of that. So we could see locally oh, roughly three to four inches in some of these spots where we see the darker blues, but on average, one to two, and then locally is three to four. And again, this will be a fairly light, fluffy snow, um, so, you know, a lot of that may blow around on the roads as well. Um, and then as far as temperatures are concerned, and this is kind of a, an outlook for uh, the next three to four days. Tonight will probably be one of the relatively warmer nights because of the cloud cover coming in. Um, but then as those clouds clear out um, for Wednesday morning, Thursday morning, uh, this is kind of what we're looking for for lows. Um, they'll, they'll differ a little bit from day to day. Some of these northern valleys here, I would not be surprised if these numbers continue to go down into the below zero range, especially uh, any locations that are sheltered from wind and locations that have fresh snow on the ground. So again, over near Wenatchee, Waterville Plateau, you guys got a couple inches up there this morning um, that may contribute to a little bit colder temperatures than what we see here uh, as far as our highs for the next few days as well um, we're not even going to break freezing for pretty much uh, any location in the inland northwest so again we have yet to see this kind of cold this winter this is our real first true cold snap here uh, wind chills uh, we do currently have a wind chill advisory out for the okanagan valley this does go through tomorrow morning this is a, a snapshot of what the wind chills may be like come um, the morning commute, uh, bus hour time. So we're still looking at wind chills roughly uh, minus 8 to minus 15 going through that narrow valley there. And then for Republic, Winthrop, also very cold. The winds won't be as strong in those locations, but the temperatures will most likely be colder. Uh, then we'll also have some winds continuing to come down the Purcell Trench. So that's from Bonners Ferry to Sandpoint to Rathdrum. And that will produce some single digit wind chills as well. Um, but these areas down here will be a little bit less wind tomorrow morning, um, more cloud cover, a little bit more snow falling. So this is kind of a general outlook of how our temperatures look compared to normal. And this is just one spot. This is OMAC, but this represents pretty much every community in the inland northwest for the next five days. This uh, lower dash line here is what our normal lows would be. And this green line up here is what normal highs are. So here's the range of temperatures each day, and this is not necessarily representative um, for the exact values for each location, but the trends. So what we're showing here is that our high temperatures are barely going to be reaching what our normal lows are, um, given the cold Arctic air mass that has moved into the region. So then as we get into later in the week, um, we have snow chances returning. Uh, so right now we're fairly moderate confidence that Friday, Saturday is going to feature some snow in the inland northwest. Uh, the exact amounts carry some lower confidence and for each particular location, but we are confident that snow levels will be on the ground. This will be one of the first systems this winter. We will not be dealing with a mix of freezing rain and rain, uh, given the cold air in place. 
And then we will see some uh, winds picking up Saturday afternoon, and that will bring the potential across the Columbia Basin, Palouse, uh, lower Idaho Panhandle, uh, for some of this new snow to blow around, and that may cause some issues for visibilities as well as drifting. Uh, as we get past Saturday, um, this is for kind of Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, some models continue to in indicate that snow chances uh, in a fairly light form may linger across the region in each of those days. Other models uh, bring some drier air in. So right now our confidence is fairly low um, as far as where the continuation will sn of snow will occur in those time frames. If we had to uh, give a geographic area, we would probably favor kind of southeastern Washington, the lower Idaho Panhandle, maybe up along the Cascade Crest, um, but it's tough to really pinpoint that right now. But again, we do have uh, fairly high confidence, so this air mass will remain cold enough that uh, anything that does fall in this time frame will remain in the form of snow. Uh, with this cold air in place for the next week or so, we will uh, continue to see our rivers freezing up. So it will be helpful to us. Um, and even if you want to just send us emails, you don't have to call it in. Uh, as you continue to notice rivers uh, becoming frozen, uh, just let us know. So then as we do approach any kind of next warm up or rain event, uh, that's where it really becomes a concern because then the ice breaks up and we potentially have those ice jam issues. Uh, as far as our snowpacks uh, concerned, for much of eastern Washington, north Idaho, those numbers remain fairly similar to what we looked at last week. If not, they went maybe one or two ticks down in a percentage, so not much change. I outlined here the area that did change here in the last week, and those areas went up because um, that's where a bulk of the heaviest moisture fell here in the last seven days. So. As a regional standpoint, we're doing pretty good, at least in Idaho and eastern Washington. Uh, could still need some catch up along the Cascades. And here looking out for February 11th through the 17th, um, you can see our precipitation chances on the left here kind of favor near to slightly above normal odds of continued precipitation, probably more southeastern Washington, lower Idaho, uh, the better chances but a fairly strong signal that our temperatures here across the west uh, into Montana and the northern plains are going to remain on the colder side than normal. So that will conclude today's briefing. Um, I will